Hello and welcome to the very first Planet Retro guide. So, today I'm going to show you how to download and install and set up and configure PCSX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator, the most popular, the furthest in development, and the overall most reliable PS2 emulator. So first of all, go to the first link in the description, it's just going to be to this website, pcsx2.net, it's the official website. Uh, go to the download page and then select for whichever version you want. This tutorial is going to be for the Windows version. I'd suggest the latest up version and the standalone installer. Okay, once you got that file, uh, you're going to want to get all of these. Uh, you probably already have C++, but just make sure that you get this as well when you down when you install this, because in just all of these, except for I guess desktop and start menu, if you really don't care to. Um, but just make sure you get these two for sure in case uh, you have it already but the version isn't backwards compatible or PCSX2 needs a specific version this will make sure that you get it correctly just gonna put that in the standard spot and uh, yeah so there we go a solid state drive so that might be a bit uh, snappier for me but now we can get to the fun stuff which is uh installing it okay so now here you have it on your desktop or wherever if you you know you find it <laughs> find the program uh, and this is going to be the configuration process so for the language selector I would suggest leaving it on system default that will just do whatever your computer is set to so mine is English obviously so it's going to do U US English um, anyway so uh, I'll do all these later, but I would just recommend sticking with this for the now. Um, I'll go and set up all of these things in a bit. Okay, so the BIOS. Um, so I'm going to go to that. Okay, so this is inside my documents, uh, PCSX2. That's an automatic folder that gets made when you install it. Now I'm going to put this folder in the... Uh, description or a link to a download to this um, it'll be a dot zip though which you'll need WinRAR or 7-zip to open up um, and then it's just all of the PlayStation 2 BIOSes okay so now that you have the BIOS file uh, you, this is what you're going to have and basically you just want to get all of these and then just copy and paste into the PCSX2 folder all of them just why not make sure that you get all of the files hit refresh and for whichever one you're playing, if you want to play PAL games, Europe 2.0, I would suggest if you're playing NTSC J, you know, Jap Japan, Japanese games, there's only 1.0, so I guess you're kind of stuck with that. But for the US and the European ver BIOS files, you can get uh, newer versions. I'm not sure if you can find them online or not. This is all that I've been able to find. This is all that I really care to find. 2.2 works for me because I'll be playing. NTSC U games. Okay, so now that's all good, we're going to configure the uh, video settings. So first of all, 16 by 9, obviously, uh, unless of course you have a three, 4 by 3 monitor, that's fine too. Speed X, this depends on the game, but as a general, I would suggest something like this for everyone. Uh, maybe change this if it looks like your frame rates pretty low even if the game's starting at 100 percent and you just don't care if you don't have that great of a computer all the way up um yeah but this is what i would recommend for the general public that isn't emulation and who has a decent pc um for some games you're going to have to change a lot of these settings uh, specifically the speed hacks if you want to know how a game runs i'm just going to quickly do like um Crash Nitro Kart PCSX2. Okay, and then that brings you to the PCSX2 wiki. And uh, it tells you all of the configurations and stuff that people have tried. And it says, runs of a full speed VU1 must be in super VU mode or game will not load. Switching it while in game will make it instantly hang. Uh, all speed hacks, excluding fast C DVD, MTVU, runs excellently. Um, this works for any game. It will tell you if there's any graphical glitches. It will tell you how to fix those if there are fixes out there. It will tell you what settings to use, what settings to not use. Um, 
So yeah, like I'm gonna load object two, and it says glitches, glitchy eyes and messed up colors active. Nobody knows how to fix that yet. It says to run these. Uh, obviously, it talks about the graphical glitches and whatnot. So yeah, it just depends. You're gonna might have to change some graphics settings, might have to change some sound settings. I've had I've run into that with a few games. Just it'll tell you what to do though if you feel like you, you don't know how. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now onto the actual plugin settings, which is what's going to give you the prettiness of emulation. Okay, first things first, the adapter. That's basically just going to be what like your video card is. So I'm gonna choose GTX 760 and actually we should have done this first. Oh, I guess that stays. I don't know. Auto for interlacing. Um, just automatic is the most trustworthy. And if it doesn't work, just hit F5 until the interlace or the deinterlacing or interlacing works correctly. Um, you can set it to do scaling. You can set it to do custom resolution. So, like, I'm gonna set mine to 1920 by 1080 because that's what I'm gonna want for most games. Um, native would just be the native PS2. Scaling would be like 2x would be double of whatever the game runs at. 6x would be six times whatever the game runs at. That's just all that it is. I'm gonna just stick with this. I would suggest it doing whatever like your monitor resolution is, or if you really want to, you can do like basically a, a dynamic super resolution. I think that's what it's called, which would basically be if I put 4K here and then it played it at 4K, but then put it back down to 1080 to fit on my monitor. So then things would be loaded at 4K and it would look super crystal clear on a 1080p monitor because you can do that. Shade boost is basically just contrast brightness and saturation as you can see here. So if you want your colors to be a bit stronger, boop. Uh, stuff like that, just general stuff. Uh, feel free to mess with that if you want. If you screw it up, there's a reset button. Don't worry about it. FXAA is basically blending all the pixels together. For some games, it looks really good. For some games, it looks really bad. Um, experiment, it depends on the game, uh, it depends on the resolution, it depends on a lot of things, but generally, nah, just, de it depends on the game. I'm gonna leave it on, because I think that for the game I'm gonna be using as a demonstration, it should look pretty good. FX shader would be for if there's a specific game, and you got like, a bloom effect, and you put that on, you enable the FX shader, but I'm not going to do that right now because I don't do that for any of the games that I play on PCS X2. Texture filtering, obviously, allow white the textures. Hardware hacks, um, this would be like putting on um, MSAA, which is really good anti aliasing, multi sample anti aliasing to be more specific. Uh, that is very power hungry. I'm going to say that right now. If you turn this on and your frame rate immediately dips, that is the reason why. Uh, skip draw all of these things. Um, some games need them. Some games it will destroy them. So what I would recommend is going to the PCSX2 wiki and doing it there. Um, I'm going to quickly set this for uh, the game that I'm going to be demonstrating. Um, so I'm just going to set it up like this because that's what the game requires, which is Crash from Sanity. So uh, yeah. I would suggest turning anisotropic filtering on, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but it definitely looks better, and it's not much of a performance performance impact, so might as well just go with it. Software mode settings, that doesn't really matter, but just in case you ever decide to use software mode, uh, if, if the game requires or something, I would suggest just having that ready, and I don't think it goes any higher than 16. Nope. So there we go. Now for audio. So this is generally pretty simple. So this is the most accurate and the best quality, uh, but you can do whatever you want. If you're really that strapped on frames or something, you can put it to the lowest setting. It doesn't really matter. You can adjust latency and stuff. Um, I'm, you can do freaking 7.1, because why not? Uh, generally, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, now for setting up a controller. This is going to depend on what controller you're using, or if you're going to use DS3 tool or DS4 tool. Right now, I'm going to set this up with DS3 tool. Um, this basically just allows you to use a PS3 controller as an Xbox 360 controller on your computer. Uh, it works amazingly. Uh, do some research and figure out what you need or want, or if you have a USB controller or whatever. If you're just going to use a keyboard, go ahead. Um, but I'm going to set this up exactly how I want to, so it's just 
pretty simple. You just go through hitting all the buttons. And uh, yeah, very straightforward. So I'm just gonna skip over this and go to the next uh, part of the tutorial. Okay, so the next thing is downloading or ripping games. So basically what downloading would be is going to a website like emuparadise.me, which is going to be in the description, and downloading a game from there. Um, that's that's pretty easy, it takes a while because if you have slow internet and then on top of that, well, it'll take a while if you have slow internet and even if you don't, it'll still take a while because they have generally pretty slow servers. I would suggest just ripping uh, the games from a DVD reader on your computer. Uh, just use IMG burn or something. Just That's going to be a lot faster, but if you can't for whatever reason, go ahead and use Emu Paradise. Or if you really want to, I guess you could torrent or something. Um, so that's just up to you. But I would personally recommend using a DVD ripping software and putting the disc inside of your computer. Or you could even just run the game straight off of your DVD drive, but that takes you know that takes more time we gotta deal with discs and stuff I personally just ripped this file but whatever <laughs> so uh, yeah okay so now that you've selected your game which is just ISO selector browse and then you find your folder with the stuff and mine's right here um, then you're just gonna go ahead and boot CDVD fast if you do full that basically just goes through the PS2's BIOS and stuff doesn't really matter just skip it doesn't yeah so I'm actually gonna I'm gonna put uh, footage over this that is of the game running and stuff because uh, just it makes more sense <laughs> uh, instead of the loading screens and stuff. But basically, uh, that is it. That is all you need to know. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, either forums or comment or something. But there you go. That is how you install configure and run PCSX2.